I want to talk to you about how you can create a food forest in the desert. My name is Louis de Jaeger. I'm a food forest and landscape designer and consultant. I also write books and I teach about the subject. And currently I'm in Jordan. I'm at minus 400 meters below sea level, one of the lowest points of Earth. And this is a video about hope. This is a video where I want to show you that if it's possible to create a food forest in these kind of situations, it's possible everywhere. And this is what this video is about. I'm very close to the Palestinian-Israeli border. Behind me you can see the Dead Sea, one of the saltiest water bodies in the world. I started my permaculture adventure around 10 years ago and one of the videos I saw was a video of Jeff Lawton. He was greening the desert. He worked on it for three years but then the funding of this project stopped so he had to find a new place. I'm standing next to the new greening the desert. This is very, very horrible soil very stony, very rocky, and it's almost impossible to grow anything except pioneer species such as the prosopis and other pioneer species. So first of all, what you need to do is you make ditches like this, kind of swales, where the rainwater can be stored. If you just keep it bare like that, that's not good enough. You need to mulch it to prevent evaporation. You start by planting very hardy pioneer species such as this one. We are gonna look to the nature that's surrounding us and we're gonna plant seeds of trees that grow naturally near. So if it grows near it will also grow on your site. And then if you wait long enough you get this wonderful oasis in the middle of the desert. Let's go and check it out. They made these wells on contour lines and in those wells, they mulched a lot. They put a lot of organic materials, compost in it, so the moisture doesn't evaporate. It stays in the soil. You have these little berms, and these berms, they keep the water from going downhill. Your goal is that every drop that falls on your site stays on your site and stays for there as long as possible before it runs off. First, they planted nitrogen-fixing trees such as Leucina, such as Prosopis. And then you see that these trees grow very fast, they don't need a lot of water and they provide shade for other plants such as this pomegranate that needs more care and more water. And once you have enough of these establishing trees, you can cut some of them and replace them by other less hardy trees. This is a beautiful olive tree. Even although it's standing here for already 10 years, they still mulch it. So to keep the moisture, you have to imagine yourself going into the desert without a parasol or an umbrella to keep you shaded. You will dehydrate very quickly. Well, the soil is like yourself and it needs shading. Here you can beautifully see all the different swells when you're going downhill and every time the rain will stop and infiltrate and the carbon will hold moisture as long as possible. Water is very precious if you're in an arid area so every drop of water you use you have to use it twice, three times, four times as much as possible so every human being consumes a lot of water in, by washing their clothes, by doing the dishes, by taking showers and this is what we call grey water. It isn't bad, this grey water, such as black water. They contain pathogens because you pee and poo in black water. Grey water is very clean and needs only a little bit cleaning before you can release it in nature and you can release it to water your plants. So in this property, the water of the showers, of the sinks, of the washers goes into these kind of reed beds. These reed beds will filter the grey water and will release it into the food forest itself. You can see behind me. And the beautiful thing is, this reed bed is on the top of the hill. So the water release should be as high as possible so you can irrigate as much land as possible below on lower altitudes on your site. One of the best ways to save water is by just not using water at all. For example here, a dry composting toilet. You can poo, you can pee and you don't need one drop of water. Why? Because your poo and pee will get mixed with sawdust, with straw or with other organic material. So it has a perfect 
carbon-nitrogen balance and this will compost ideally you wait two years or unless it's a thermophilic composting a very warm composting you can do it earlier and then you can apply it at the bottom of your trees or wherever you want in your garden be safe read the humanure handbook by jenkins and you'll learn everything you can about humanure human manure super interesting topic super good book so even in this most dry climate you can grow olives which are super tasty Olives can be grown in very dry conditions. It's possible to grow all kind of citrus trees. And one of my all time favorites is this date palm. They are so sweet, so delicious, and they can grow in such a harsh conditions. I even heard people saying that you could become 100 years old by only drinking milk and eating dates. I won't try it, but it's good to know. Another technique you might want to use is having annual beds also on contour so the water won't run off and you shade it with some leaves, palm leaves for example. There are some irrigation pipes because some vegetables just need more water than the 150 millimeters here. This is a demonstration site just to show you how possible it is to do something. Does it say that we all need to go to the desert and do this? No, I'd rather have you go to a place where there is more rain and where the situation is much more favorable. But it's just good to know that even in these, maybe one of the harshest conditions, it is possible to grow food, although you have to water a little bit. They're also doing some aquaculture. You can grow things in water, for example, in bathtubs. And right here, they're growing these water plants because they're making a natural swimming pool, a swimming pool that doesn't need to filter with chlorine or other chemicals but can just be filtered by plants yes it is even possible to do this in the desert when you start your own food forest or permaculture project it's so important to grow your own plants you can of course go out to a nursery and buy all the plants you need if budget is no problem for you but it's very rewarding and nice to have your own nursery have your own plants you can have more plant diversity, you can have more genetic diversity and it's also very nice just to work with your hands and feel all the plants before you plant them out. Otherwise you just go to your shop, buy all the plants you need, put it in the ground, put it in the soil and you never have the same feeling as if you would have planted them yourself. It is time consuming, it's another job but it's so nice to do. Another very interesting way to store and harvest rainwater is by installing these wicking beds. In this example they used water tanks, they just cut off the top and they buried in. They have this insulation of stones, they have a lot of mulch on them and soil beneath of course and this way they can grow a lot of vegetables by only using 50% of the water one would otherwise need to grow the same amount of plants. It's one of the techniques and it's really helpful. And some systems don't have to be complicated so you need to wash your hands. Water goes inside and comes out here to garden this beautiful rain garden. Things can be very simple. In a food forest you shouldn't only plant food species but you should also grow your medicine, firewood and whatever you need to work, to live. For example this aloe vera plant, it's so useful, there are myriads of uses to use them. For example if you've been in the sun too long you can just rub it on your skin or if you have other skin problems you can use it. You can make juices out of them, you can do so many great things. I'm very glad that my dream came true and I finally went to Greening the Desert, a place that inspired me 10 years ago and really started me on my permaculture regenerative farming trajectory. Since then I've started my own permaculture landscape architecture business and I'm glad that I'm finally here. I just want to give you this message of hope that no matter where you are in the world, you just have to have an idea, you just have to have a plan and then you just have to do it. You have to dig that first swale, you have to plant that first tree. But just by sitting on your bench and crying about how the world is coming to an end and personally I've done that, so <laughs> no blaming in that. But instead of doing this, we should rather just go and do it because 
this is an example it only started 10 years ago 10 years ago it was that kind of soul you could see above and now it's this in only 10 years time so no matter even if you're eight years old and you're watching this you still have 10 more years to live plant this first tree and you could leave a legacy of this and imagine if we just all did this then our world would be so much more beautiful but there's just one thing stopping us and that's ourselves because the only thing we need to do is plant that first tree and if you plant a lot of trees you one day have a beautiful food forest which will give you food throughout the year and will inspire you your family and many others to do the same so just let's do it